I oversee different types of ministries that we are engaged in in, in the United States. Uh, from um, youth ministry, uh, to prison ministry, uh, to all kinds of uh, ministries for um, uh, rescue missions, uh, women's ministry, men's ministry. The heartbeat really is that people come to know the healer. And the healer of all of our wounds, no matter if it's a wound uh, inflicted on us by uh, someone that we really know or someone that we don't know, uh, we, we, we have a tendency to, uh, to think that we can handle it ourselves. And there's only one who can heal us from any and all wounds, uh, emotional and spiritual wounds, and that is Jesus Christ. So what we do, we open up the Word of God to them and say, okay, now let's, let's see how your life uh, compares to what the Bible says you ought to be doing. And um, so we reveal the healer to the people, that is Jesus Christ. And we say, this is what, what, what we ask, and this is what uh, Jesus Christ really asks you to, to do. This is how you, you should live. Now, if you have not lived that way, okay, uh, this is the reason why you, you have emotional and spiritual issues to deal with. This is why the sin so weighs you, you down so much that sometimes you can't even walk, sometimes you can't even think. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sin issue, and this is what we're trying to expose to people and say, now, if you confess your sins, John 1, 1 verse 9, yeah. Uh, if you confess your sins, Jesus will heal and uh, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And uh, so by, by exposing them to the Word of God and to the healer, uh, we uh, let the Holy Spirit come into the lives. And it's not that we are able to change person's heart and that we are able to 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 change and heal a person it is only only uh, Jesus Christ through the work of the Holy Spirit that changes a person's heart and that they receive healing so when you're talking about evangelizing yes we uh, everybody that comes in here is really a, um, a a prospect so to speak and then we have a certain percent that have you know hardly heard about Jesus Christ, except in the context of swearing. And uh, those people, uh, that's a joy to see because when they come to know Jesus Christ, they really, wow, it's for me? I mean, wow, you know, Jesus died for me? Man, you know, that's really a revelation and that's, that's a joy. So when people walk out of here, either healed or coming to know Jesus Christ, we say, man, that is gas in our tank. The real intent of discipleship is, is to become followers of Jesus. That's, that's what it means, to being a disciple, being, is a, being a follower of Jesus. Now that is not, does not mean that you're going to be, be uh, uh, just uh, studying with your mind what the Word of God says, you know, but that you start doing what He says. There's a big difference between calling yourself a Christian and calling yourself and being a disciple, in other words, a follower of Jesus, doing what he says, walking in his footsteps. But we always ask people, you know, please support us, pray for us. Every session, ministry session that we have here is supported by at least uh, 10 people praying. We have people all over this area that are being notified when a, a ministry session is going on and uh, they have committed to praying for, 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 for us, what we do and for each ministry session. So that's number one. We will not do anything unless we will have not any ministry session going on or do any ministry unless we have people praying. Right now, 
for what you are doing here. We have people praying. Uh, so um, that's number one. Number two, uh, and they can come and, and support us with their, their time. It's what we call uh, uh, time, talent, and treasure. And uh, yes, uh, even though we don't charge anything for our ministry sessions, we still need money to operate what we do. So uh, people, uh, you know, they, can, they can donate the finances if God has blessed them with the ability to give, we would um, uh, encourage them to give because that's part of, of, of their ministry also. About 25 years ago, I had a vision. I was at a area that had a large crater. I don't know if you ever been to a place like Hawaii, where you climb up and there's a crater down there, or any situation like that. Well, this is what I, I thought was a dream. I, I had a, a dream, which I, I now recognize it, it was a vision, of where I heard loud crying and moaning. And so I was, I was led to call up that mountain, so to speak, and look over the over the top inside the crater and there were hundreds of thousands of people arms up just with agony on the faces and, 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 and just crying oh help 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 and that has never left me and that spurs me on uh, to um, to help people find healing in their lives and to find Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only one that really matters in our life. I, 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 I firmly believe that Jesus Christ has to, has to be at the center of our lives, that our whole lives ha should revolve around Him. What I really would like people to know, that there is healing. If they are suffering, if they have pain in their heart, if they have a hole in their heart that doesn't seem to be able to be filled, there's only one place, there's only one person that can fill that hole. It's not your wife, it's not your children, it's not your job, it's not anything else that you're involved in, but only Jesus Christ can fill that hole. And that's, that's my heart's cry, that people may, may find Jesus Christ as the, the, the one that can, that can fill their lives.